what did he see he saw in the spirit realm chariots of fire horses and angels surrounding them so when the bible says the lord opened his eyes it does it's, it's not saying that he was physically blind as it were because with his physical eyes he saw the army of the Syrians. So he had good eyesight as it were, but poor spiritual eyesight. And that is the challenge of a lot of Christians. Poor spiritual eyesight. Poor spiritual ears. But we have them. We have spiritual ears. We have spiritual eyes. They are part of our life. They are part of our constitution. But like I said, they are not all active. They are not functioning. Because of lack of spiritual training. Somebody says spiritual training. Say it again. Or what I call lack of consistency in spiritual pursuits. Because many of us are very casual in spiritual pursuits. Paul told Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. I like this also in the Amplifier. This is what Paul told Timothy. Very important uh, verse worthy of note. First Timothy chapter 4, 7 and 8, the Amplified Version. Now, Paul says to Timothy, but have, uh, uh, but have nothing to do with irreverent folklore and silly myths. You see, what kind of irreverent folklore and silly myths are? Uh, they, they were, there's, there's so much we invest our time in sometimes that is very non-essential. Um, when they say means they, they don't have any bearing on our lives in terms of accomplishments. I like that. They will You can sit down for hours and all you talk about is somebody in the church. Nothing productive as it were in your interaction. All you do is to spend hours chastising somebody in their absence to, to no benefit as it were in your, in your spiritual life. We call it irreverent folklore and silly myths in Kwasiasem. You sit down and all we talk about is in Kwasiasem. On the other hand, that's what Paul tells Timothy, on the other hand, discipline yourself Go to the next verse or whatever. Oh, what are you doing? It's the same. On the other hand, discipline yourself for the purpose of godliness, or what you call keep yourself spiritually fit. <laughs> For physical training, it's of some value. There are some, every Sunday morning, physical training, golf. For them to meet with their friends and play golf is more important to come into a church to waste their time. Or to go and play long tennis, as it were. But I'll, I'll be addressing their issues very soon. Since physical training is of some value, keep fit, golf, um, jogging, 
Long term, there's some value in it. But godliness, or what Paul calls spiritual training, is of value in everything and in every way since it holds promise for the present life and for the life to come. When we say spiritual training, what we are doing right now is spiritual training. Amen. Amen. See, it becomes irrelevant. Coming to church becomes irrelevant when you are a social church goer. There are some people who are social church goers. For them, it's another place where they can meet with their friends and family. So they are more social. They come to church. They don't have a Bible. It's a, if you go to church where they sing hymns, you don't have a hymn book. Some of you go to church with a hymn book but no Bible. Thank God today for technology today. You can have your Bible here. I have about 10 different versions of Bible here. So thank God today you can even take your notes. I have notebooks here that I can take notes. If, if that is your, what you do, that is good. But you don't come to church because you've come to a social gathering. I thank God we have what they call messages that we put on the screen. But some people come and when they do this, they are gone. Bishop Taki used to say about one man who was always sleeping in church in Presby. And then the, the pastor got disturbed and then called him and said, Please, the way you sleep in church is too much. I say, I say, Pastor, if you are beautiful, I'm a man though. It's a bit of a man. It's a bit of a man. It's a you see, you, you can be a social church goer. I'll talk about that very soon. Social church goer, for you, church is just one of the things you do, not a spiritual pursuit, as it were. But if church is a spiritual pursuit, you consider that I want to be in church because I want to grow spiritually, I want to be more developed, I want to draw closer to God, then you are a spiritual church goer, not a social church goer. So amplified amplifies the English. So it helps us and appreciate it that. There's something called spiritual training and there's something we call spiritually fit. Spiritually fit. Amen. Amen. When you are spiritually fit, it means you are well groomed and well prepared to deal with any spiritual challenges that crop up in the area of your life. You are spiritually fit. See, spiritual training, being spiritual fit, is a function of giving attention to spiritual things. In First Timothy chapter four, verse thirteen and fourteen, in the English Standard Version, Paul Paul addresses more issues of um um. Uh, Pastor Timothy. So in first Timothy 4 13, it says, Till I come. Let's read it in the King James Version. I like the King James Version. It says, Till I come, give attendance, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. That was Paul's personal instruction to Timothy. I don't know whether he was talking about church 
issues it's not very clear there see but if there was anything to be read at that time maybe paul's letters and some of the psalms and the prophets and the writings of moses those were the things that were available to be read so paul is saying that till i come give attention give attention to reading to exhortation and that will talk about church and then to doctrine or to teaching and then verse 14 says neglect not the gift that is in thee that's where the problem is the new living translation says do not neglect the spiritual gift you received through the prophecy spoken over you when the elders of the church laid their hands on you listen getting born again and being filled with the holy ghost and talking in tongues talking in tongues is a million dollar blessing more than a million dollar blessing but some of us don't take it serious don't take it serious but Paul was telling Timothy do not neglect the spiritual gift this gift that has been given to you tell you give attention to it See, the gift of the Holy Spirit demands our full attention see the problem of the average Christian hear me I've got some here the problem of the average Christian is neglecting the things of the spirit in our pursuits that's a problem we seem too busy to attend to spiritual things until there's a crisis I never forget those early days of our church this our member a lady in the church and uh, for some time I didn't see her in church and then I met her at Mr. Biney's uh, spot where he sells his, his uh, newspapers and when I met her she had on a white head a duku a duku head, head scarf now at that time and so we don't put on head scarf when we come to church but she had on a white hair scarf and she had tied it like somebody going to Pentecost church no, or, or let me say apostolic church <laughs> and I said what's happening you know we come to church and tell you hmm, so many problems so, so there's a prayer meeting here and that's why I'm at this afternoon I'm there at the prayer meeting this afternoon you see and I said that's why you are in YG eh? And I tell her every week we have a prayer meeting in church. And we have people who come to church with testimonies because they were at prayer meeting to pray. What are they doing differently at that uh, gathering that we don't do here? But you don't take what we are doing here serious. So you think what they are doing there is more serious than what we do here. Because she has got she had gotten into some crisis. And crisis is part of life. Sometimes we make economic pursuits become more overwhelming than our spiritual pursuits economic pursuits are important we have to go to work and that's very important because if we don't go to work we will have money to come to church but economic pursuits should not be overwhelming than spiritual pursuits there was a time when we had church in, on Tuesday, on Friday. You find people coming here in their work gear because service is at 5.30. So they close at 5. They don't want to go home. So they come to church for two hours before they go home. Now we don't see a lot of that. 
Now we are too busy, too tired. Some of you are growing too old quickly. In your 20s, too old. In your 20s, you close work at 5, there's teaching service at 5.30, prayer service at 5.30, and you are too tired. So you go home and watch TV. In fact, you think you are going home to rest, but you go home to watch TV. Or you go home to browse. The moment you go home and you lie on your bed and you take, what's up? Facebook. Oh, what's up? Oh, Facebook. Oh, what's up? There was a time when people were so passionate. So passionate. I was talking to Pastor Albert uh, Sam, our pastor at Mina. She came to visit me. I said, Daddy, I remember those days when we were at Paradise School. We didn't want to miss church because of the teaching, not because of prophetic, was it? Because of the teaching. When we were at Paradise School, Pastor Albert was telling me at the offices, we didn't want to miss service. Home. She was, he was young then. He said, because of the teaching. See, there was a, there's been a huge, a huge distraction because of, of the overemphasis of the prophetic that we went through for a period in this house. So people came to church, came to church during the prophetic times because of the prophetic, not because of the teaching. Not because of the teaching. It was a huge destruction, very huge destruction. Because this church in the 90s, we grew because of teaching, solid teaching, Bible teaching, prayer meetings. I'm praying that we'll come back to the former days where we Amen. pursue God. Amen. We pursue God. Amen. We are so hungry for God. I don't want to go home. It's 5 30. I want to come to church before I go home. Hallelujah. Amen. See, spiritual pursuits has become spare time pursuits. I'm so busy and okay, I'll I try and make time. I'll try and make time and have my devotion. I'll try and make time to come to church. I'm so busy. Daddy, this is I'm very, very busy. My jobs, a lot of jobs. I've got so many clients, so many customers. Hey, when you do you have clients and customers the way you were coming to church to pray? So God has done you evil by giving you plenty of clients and customers. Hey, can I have an amen? Amen. In Romans chapter 8 verse 5, there's a, this is a wide scripture about our pursuits. Romans chapter 8 verse 5. It says, for those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. Someone said the things of the Spirit. So there are things of the flesh, things of the Spirit. The things of the Spirit includes every activity that draws you closer to God. Like this activity, this Sunday morning, we came here at 8 o'clock by 10.30, we are closing. This is an activity. And this activity is expected to draw you closer to God. Because there are several activities that pulls us away from God. And it's important for you to note that there are things that when they occupy your life, they pull you away from God. They make you look God. You become dead with spiritual things. Can I have an amen? Amen. God first. God first is a lost mantra. 
God first. When I receive my salary, who is first? My tights or the shoe I bought? God first is a lost mantra today. Paul offers us an agenda for pursuits in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1. In a very short sermon, I'm going to end very soon. What I call an agenda. You see, every human being has their own kind of agenda. There's an agenda why you came to church. It, it, it happens to all of us. Sometimes people come into our lives and we, we, we love them so much and they become they become a rallying point for why we want to be in church. Sometimes it's so it's not, not, nothing wrong with that. Especially you've been coming to church for some time and then somebody you fall in love with a young man and young lady and then hey wherever you are you come to church. And when you come to church, no matter what the man of God is preaching, you're always looking around. Uh, okay, obey. Obey. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Nothing wrong about that, maybe as, 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 as an agenda, but beyond that, there's the ultimate agenda that makes you want to come together to pursue God. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 1 he says pursue pursue love and earnestly desire the spiritual gifts especially that you may prophesy one translation says covet to prophesy when we say somebody is covetous it's, in a negative sense it's a, to have a, an overwhelming desire for something that does not belong to you you are covetous but in the positive sense to be covetous about spiritual things is of ultimate importance that I'm so desirous of God I want more of God I want the gifts of the Holy Spirit to operate in my life I want to flow in the prophetic it is my desire it is my ambition I pursue it in other words don't be just satisfied with coming to sit down on Sunday, get a good word, and then going back home. It becomes a routine in your life. What you call a mundane activity. But beyond being present, you desire that you too, you hear from God. You have a hearing here, and you have a seeing eye. That's a prophetic. The, the things that happen to the unbelievers if the same thing happened to us without us having a resource or some, something as a recourse then it means it, this thing is not benefiting us are you listening to what I'm saying to know that Danger is coming, so let me avoid it. You know that this thing will harm me, so don't let, let me make that choice. It's of immense benefits for us who are children of God. So he says, earnestly desire to prophesy. And that's what I talk about having a prophetic relationship with the Lord. You must come to a place in your work with the Lord where you hear from the Lord and where you see what the Lord is showing. And that's what Paul talks about in verse 39, the same chapter, 14, 39. 
for us to establish what I call a prophetic relationship with the Lord is vital. So Paul says in verse 39, 1 Corinthians 14, he says, So my brothers earnestly desire, earnestly desire to prophesy. See, earnestly desire to prophesy is not as it were only coming to church and then we are all praying and say, My children, my children, my children, this is what the Lord, that's not all. Honestly, desire to prophesy is to have a prophetic relationship with the Lord where you have a hearing ear and a seeing eye. You hear what the Lord says, you see what the Lord shows. One day, Prophet Bedu called me. Prophet Bedu is going to be here in two weeks' time for our program. And I said, Prophet B. Say, more prophets from each other, or the million of us. Now, me to me, your prophets that time I had gotten a mind stroke and I recovered. I said, How can I have sons who are prophets and I'm getting a mind stroke? Nobody told me about it. You should, you should see it by force. But the master tells me that one man of God that he knew him, people whom God called to be prophet in his church when he was alive, as a, as a prophet, he will, put a, he will put a pin in his bedroom, pin. And I'll tell them, if you're a prophet, show me where the pain is. <laughs> that, that's how he will ordain you as a prophet. <laughs> and he says, but, but I must say that some of them were able to pick it. Some of them were to say, Daddy, you put the pain here. Hey, Charlie, ditto. I told Prophet I said, hey, I can't be having prophets around me. When I'm a person, I come here, I don't know. Nobody wants to be hammer best I come and the prophet in my house, even when the hammer best come, I will see what happened. <laughs> <laughs> you see, our work with the Lord should be beneficial. We have the Holy Spirit who talks, who gives us warnings and signals. We must see it, or you must see. Don't, don't be content with mundane church life. Church life. You are there every Tuesday. You are there every Friday. You are there every Sunday. When danger is coming, you can smell it. No. Hallelujah. We must come to a place in our work with the Lord where we become prophetic not only to ourselves but to our family and then to our church family and then to our, our family too, biological family. Endlessly desire, endlessly Honestly, desire to prophesy. See, when you have endless desire, you pursue it. You are praying in tongues. You are reading books about the Holy Spirit. You are reading the Word of God more. You want to prophesy. You are reading books about prophets who are prophesying. When we say you pursue something, you go after it. Like Elijah and Elisha. We'll talk about that later. Elijah says, Elijah says, I want a double portion of your spirit and that is what I want. A relentless pursuit until I get it. One of the interesting pictures you gather about the psalmist whether it was David writing or the sons of Korah you see some pursuits in the psalmist in Psalm 42 verse 1 and 2 let's read just three psalms Psalm 42 verse 1 and 2 it says as the deer pants for flowing streams so pants my soul for you, O God. 
my soul thirsts for God. For the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? I know. There are some of you you have a certain anticipation when you study because I'm going to church on Sunday. So you iron your dresses, you polish your shoe for Sunday. Some people have a certain anticipation for Sunday. Sunday doesn't come on hours. You wake up and say, Hey, you may consider. Hey, you may consider. Why your one one? Because <laughs> that shouldn't surprise you. See, if you if you are you are you are concerned about when shall I come and appear before God, either in public or in private, in your devotion, there, shall, there must be some some pursuit in your life that I want to come to for God. I want to fellowship with God. Yesterday, when everybody was asleep in the house, I was in the hall. I got to bed around twelve midnight. Because I said, no, I need some time to fellowship with the Lord. Just to pray in tongues. I've not had time the whole day. I was so busy yesterday. I had to meet some group from Germany. Me and some of our church members, they put us through two hours of interview about sustainability of support from Germany and they want the church view. It was a tough one. I sat before this professor and the professor asked me a question. I looked at his face. Uh, I said, ready, my answer, my answer, my answer. So I got very busy the whole day. So in the evening I was stopped. I said, I need, I, I need some time with the Lord. I need some time with the Lord. So when mom was asleep, I don't was sleeping in my, my place in my bed. Look where I was in the, in the steady, steady. I spent some time in the hall just praying in tongues. Praying in tongues. I just felt like I needed God. I needed some refreshing. <laughs> Look at another psalm, Psalm 63, verse 1. They are pursued. You see, you see a lot of pursuits in the Psalms. C.S. Lewis calls it uh, um, an appetite for God. There's a lot of appetite for God in the, in the Psalms. That's what C.S. Lewis calls it. Appetite for God. Oh, well, me appetite right. for God. Me right. Psalm 63, verse 1, it says, Oh God, I won't far a psalm of David and Gan, I won't find you and I am here here scripture than Gaza. Here scripture than Gaza. He says, Oh God, you are my God. Endlessly I seek you. My soul tests for you. My flesh faints for you as in a dry and weary land where there's no water. Hmm. You see a lot of that in the psalm. Psalm 27, maybe one more psalm. Psalm 27, verse 4. See, the writers of the psalms, they had a longing for God's presence that was overwhelming. What is your overwhelming longing? I'm basing occupy what day overwhelming longing every day some of us we have time at home is it vira kum kum that's me as a kum kum how about you i'm a friend of kum chacha <laughs> what are you what are you longing for? what is your anticipation every day the next episode episode of your favorite soap opera is that, is that your passion every day? It says, one thing have I asked of the Lord. One thing. That will I seek after. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. The writer of the psalmist, I mean the writers of the psalms, they had a longing for God's presence. A longing. See, when, when you are longing for God, your co-workers, they know it. They know you. Your co-workers. 
So on the day that they find you in the workplace, when you didn't go to church, they say, ah, in the uncle chapel. They know you. They know you every Tuesday. You will not stay for that long in the office. I said maybe there's some emergency. What you have a longing for, your neighbors know, your friends know, your family members know. Those days, no, when my mommy was alive, whenever my mommy was visiting us, my mommy knows that when he comes Sunday, he'll go to church. So when he's coming, he comes to Sunday way. It will, it, will, it will not be as if you were, I don't come to church, and then uh, you meet me and say, why didn't you come to church? My mother was visiting home. So I had to take time. My mother knew when he visits, as for Sunday, nobody will be at home. Do your friends and family members know your spiritual schedule? And do they respect your spiritual schedule? See, consistency is the bane of many Christians. Somebody say consistency. There's too much touch and go. Touch and go in some of us, our, our church life and our relationship with the Lord. Too much touch and go. A number of us are not hungry enough for the things of the Spirit. We, we even want to be pampered to attend church service. Hello. I go here. What's happening? This says you don't come to church. Daddy, I'll come. Daddy, you know I'll come. There are some things happening in the church I don't like, but uh, um, because of you, I'll come. I'm not, I'm not making it up, but that's what some people tell me. So some, somebody told me something very painful in the church. Hey, I'm going to more here. Amen. Amen. Somebody told me something painful in the church. But, but that because of you, I'll come. You don't do me a favor when you come to church. Do you know when you do me a disfavor? The place where you do me a disfavor is when you don't pay your tight. Can somebody say amen? amen? As for coming to church, you don't do it. But if you don't pay your tight, mm, at home. If you don't pay your tight, we can't pay our staff, we can't pay light bills, we can't continue this project. If you don't pay your tight, I'll not be paid. So if you don't pay your tight and you look at me and smile, who am I before man? Mike Tyson, Mike Tyson says something. Mike Tyson said that anytime he's going to a fight, he sees the opponent as somebody who doesn't want him to eat. So when he hits you, he hits you because of his food. Because he says, you want to take my title, you don't want me to eat. So that's how he approaches his enemies in the, in the ring, his opponents. He sees the enemy as somebody who doesn't want him to eat. If you don't pay your tithe, and you're a member of this church, put him as an eye. And pay the music. And pay the get your bills. And pay the get your staff. So that's the only time you do me a favor. But coming to church doesn't do me a favor, especially if you come to church and you don't tithe. Can somebody say amen? Amen. You see, the tithes for me is your heart-to-heart -heart connection with God concerning your finances. You, you don't tithe for the church to show you a favor as it were. No, it's your, it's your own commitment with the Lord as it were. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So some of you want to be pampered to attend church services. So sometimes we make a call. So we have to call sometimes to find out why they're not coming to church. But sometimes the response I receive, like, Daddy, remember, I want to remember. Remember because of Amiti. But I would never ever because of Nyami. Nyami is never chapel. I'm in local retirement, aren't you? Mayor sister, I'm in local retirement. Sneak pension. 
But some call my, we call it time and my I pray that most of us will be passionate in our holy pursuits. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. See, learning to walk in the spirit is not an optional. To give attention to the things of the spirit is not an option. Because on the scale of preference, a lot of us have things of the spirit way down the list. Way down the list. Tithes, church, prayer meeting, teaching service, pay my tithes. It's down the list. It's not a priority for you. Don't get too busy that you don't have time to pray. You don't have time to study your Bible. You don't have time to attend church, church service. Don't get too busy. Don't be deceived into thinking that you will never need spiritual help. Listen to me. You will always need spiritual help. Either for yourself or for your spouse or for your children. When, cha- when challenges come and you don't know how to apply spiritual principles, I am mobile. When I was 15 years old, I've shared it several times. In secondary school from three, J- today's JHS three. I was 15 years old. We all over alone there in the on the Kwao Mountains, where I was schooling, at the price of. Then one Sunday, one one afternoon, I started hearing voices. You are stupid. You are a fool. Young boy, 15. What, what, what is happening to me? I started misbehaving. I, I, I took a belt, lashed one of my seniors. Because the voice told me to lash him. Within a moment, within a moment, a lot of people surrounded me. And I started crying. I said, no, what's happened to me? 15. I started weeping. So I said, what's happened to me? I'm getting crazy. And then I was brought home. Fifty. My daddy asked me a lot of questions. He says, Come here. What was she we are now? I don't know. I've not smelled some before. My daddy didn't have solution. Because at that time my daddy was a social church goer. Please, the thing you are doing there eh, is not for only yourself. Bro. It's going to be for your 15 year old daughter, 15 year old son one day. When they start experiencing things that defy medical solution, they took me to Ankafo at the age of 15. I sat before a doctor. He took me through all questions. He told my father, Mr. Dupo, so what's happened to me? My daddy was naive. He didn't know what to do. See, when this happen, you must know what to do. This thing we are doing, you have a chapel, you have a Sometimes it's a bit of a social garden. But sometimes it's for your children. It's for your daughter. When they start misbehaving, then you say, what do I do? I don't know what my daddy was going through in his mind at that time, what going through his mind, but my issues got complicated. I started seeing coffins. I was lying in bed and crying. I told my stepmother, I'm dying. I, 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 I told her, I'm dying. Me, me, me. See, sometimes you are there and nobody has a, a, a solution for you. Your, ma- your mother don't know what to do. Your father doesn't know what to do. Doctors, they took me to hospital. Doctor did me every test in the world. They say, this boy is healthy. There's nothing wrong with this boy. So when it happens that at that time, your spiritual relationship with the Lord counts. You see, the membrane, old draft, we get on the same year as the one on the nobby. 
My daddy was a social church goer. We never went to church with my daddy. He was an apostolic elder. We never went to church. I never went to church until I was 15 and got born again. Then I started going to church. Me and my sister, we don't go to church. We, 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 we run away to town to dance halls. At the age of 12, 13, 14, 15, when my daddy was asleep, we ran, go to town to dance halls. There was no spiritual altar in the house. I was on admission at the University of Cape Coast Hospital when my sister got born again, my elder sister. And he and the friends surrounded my bed. And they started praying in a language. That was the first time I heard what was tongues. My 18-year-old sister. They left me some tracks. And I got born again. I received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And I got healed. I didn't get healed just by being prayer. I, I took my healing. Because even after I got born again, sometimes I'll be hearing the voices. But thank God for knowledge. I was reading a lot of books and I got to know that what was happening to me was of the devil. A.A. A. Allen. I read a lot of his materials. I said, this is the devil. Uh, eh. So I started fighting the devil on my own. Rebuking the devil. Resisting the devil. I was taking a whole lot of medicines from Ankafu. Every month I go and carry medicines from Ankafu to keep my mind at peace. My daughter, did, my father didn't have any spiritual reference point. <laughs> I will have died. But for my sister who got born again. I will have died. Parents, you are not coming to church for fun. When you bring your sons and daughters into church, it's not for fun. Maybe they are young today, but wait till they are 15, alone in school, and they start having challenges. Wait till they are, they are 16 there, and sometimes they are very young, and they start having spiritual problems. Listen to me carefully. Church, I don't know, but when I was in school, at the age of 15, some of my classmates, my classmates, they were smoking weed. I knew they were smoking weed. 15, 16. So I'm wondering, where are their parents? Where are their parents? What did they teach them at home? Was there any issue of prayer at home? Did you pray with them? Did you teach them how to pray? Did you remind them that it was a God? Listen, this thing we are doing is not about ourselves. It's about your spouse. It's about your children. It's about your great-grandchildren. We are not having fun in church. You don't need to be pumped to come to church. Nobody needs to beg you to be committed. This my daughter she is very young. Son of baby. Son of baby. Her son is the campus pastor of Visa on C Poly campus. What a joy. Visa on and Cape Coast. What's what what's one on Penelo or one on Polino? Her son. She gets back by the very only Gamdon Sissy in Norway. Oh, you catch her, sister, you know, away. Her, her son, one of our daughters here, the son is our visa president on UCC campus. Yeah, but she's a banker for church. Baby, when he comes here, I saw him in this church, Sunday school. Who knows what you're Chapel. Oh, one is one. check. check. Let them fall into the right hands when they go to school. Also called GSTS, Form 1. Those days. Senior offer any uncle, you say no, you're Christian. Those days, senior never any offer. A senior near Christian. It doesn't want a senior in front of us. Come here. And look at them. Sit down. This is the Bible. Open the Bible. You must be born again. Senior, I better open. As them born again now, born again now, senior and leading. Oh, no, oh, yes, second in command. Well, lighthouse. Amen. 
Empire also obo. My father is dedicated to We in the Mawal Town School. We are from. I got into some wrong friendship when I was in school. I'm Learning how to smoke at the age of 30, 40. Running to town to drink alcohol. At the, age of, at the age of 15, I could drink three bottles of beer and not get drunk. Yes. Yes, at the age of 15. I don't get drunk. I have to hit it up with some appeal. Before I feel like I'm in town. Friends. But if you have a father who is praying for you, because you know what? We pray for our children every day. I pray for them every day. I pray for you every day. Amen. This prayer works you. Amen. Your children are gone. You are praying for them. Amen. You are committing them, into, committing them into God's hands. You are praying for the Lord to protect them. You are praying for the Lord to guide them. You are not wasting your time. I say one day. This thing is a huge investment, church. It's a huge investment we are making. For our future, for our peace. When you are 70 years old, you can, you can sleep in peace. You know, be going to the police station always to be give your child your child a bail. So when you set up an altar in the house, your children know that we pray. When I'm praying, my children know I'm praying. I don't hide it. I don't go to a special prayer room. I pray in the hall. There, they are there. They see that they pray, praying in tongues. So sometimes when they want to disturb me, they say, "Daddy, are you praying? Can I talk to you?" It's, it's better. Church, church, this investment is so huge. Passion for the Lord. Nobody should beg you to come to church. No. You have been teaching service, somebody should beg you. Prayer service, no. No. You may be young now, you are in your 20s, you are in your 30s. Boy, wait till you are getting your sisters. I know, I know one of our great men in the country here, three children. One of them was arrested for drug traffic. Very rich man. One of the children arrested for drug trafficking. One of them died prematurely. Very handsome young man who was about to take over his father's business in his elderly age. There's only one of them left now. I'm told he has even rented, he has already made a grave for himself, paid for it, grave. When he died, where they should bury him. Is that, is that how life should end for us? traffic is drunk. I see of you. My dad, my son does not need to do drug trafficking. Doesn't need to do drug trafficking. Because there's money in the house. Because there's no spiritual barriers. There are no spiritual navigators in the house. Telling them this is what you should go, this is what you should don't do that. Do this. There's nothing spiritual warning as it were. When you soon soon popo, when you soon soon you should be our dan than one now, or chan one up a men ye men ye. So some of us are so casual. You think as I'm being cut up and anything my dama, the mamma chap. I mean I won't I won't ask them your mobile. Oh my from maybe yeah. That's when you have spiritual parameters, spiritual boundaries, teach him yeah. No wapa. No one more sleepless nights, sir. And a better say the inter or them take as some more kind of serious. I want to read it about every eye close. Take some time, think about what I've said. Let me, for me, this is one of the most important sermons I've ever preached. I told you. It's not about you. It's about your grandchildren. Your grandchildren. Your grandchildren. When I was sick, my daddy didn't have any spiritual reference points. Some, some of you, you'll be taken to all kinds of fetish. Because the problem defies all solutions. But I pray that you will set up a spiritual altar. Amen. Spiritual banner. Amen. In your house. Amen. 
that your children when they are old when you are gone they can always look at you and say daddy used to do this mommy used to do this i know the god who helped my mommy will help me the god who helped my daddy will help me yes. they, they have a reference point so church we do ourselves the own favor our own favor when we make church serious spiritual things serious we take spiritual things serious Bible says, teach a child in the way of the Lord. And when they are grown up, they will not depart. They will never. As long as you teach them, they will never depart. Sometimes they will go away what? Sometimes they will disobey you, become trapped. But as long as you have set a rod of authority, scriptural authority in the house, they will never depart. They will always come. It will always be pulling them. It will always be pulling them. You are here this morning, you are not born again. You have not given your life to Jesus. You say, Bishop, I want to be born again. I want to give my life to Jesus. Because that's the point, the place is us. Lift up your right hand, I'm going to pray for you. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want to pray for you. You are not born again. You don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I want to, I want to pray for you. It's so important. So important. Please, if you have lifted up your hand, stand up. I want to see your face. I want to pray. Stand up. Stand up. God bless you. God bless you so much. I did that when I was 15 years old, but I've never regretted. You want to walk forward. Walk forward. So they bring him. God bless you so much. God bless you. Yeah, 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 yeah. You say, Lord Jesus, I confess and I say I'm a sinner. I believe you died for me and you rose up again for me. I receive you, Jesus, as my Lord and as my Savior. I'm born again in Jesus' name. I pray for you. Stay in the house of the Lord. Serve God all the days of your life. I break Satan's power over your spirit, your soul, and body. In Jesus' name. Amen. Please follow our Pastor here. Before we stand up and pray, see, I, I, I sometimes I pity my dad. When I was, I had just learned how to walk. My mother tells me, I fell down and I, I was crippled for three months. <laughs> My mother said, oh, Papa, ne, 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 It says for three months I couldn't walk. It was an auntie who had come to the house and she did some spiritual satanic technology against me and I fell down. My, my mother's auntie. My, my mommy's my daddy's my mommy said, Oh papa, or the baby are not bomb, but those days they had something called Florida water. She says, Oh papa, or the Florida water bomb you go susa. You see, when it happens, sometimes you have bereft of ideas. What do I do for my son? I, I can I, I, I don't know how to how to measure how my daddy felt at that time, two years old and your, your, how did he feel? And then when I got uh, 15, I, I almost got crazy. The parents' spiritual life counts very much for their children. Don't worry. I mean, I mean, I worry. These choices we have made. We are here every Sunday. Some of you are here every Tuesday. Every Sunday. It's a worthwhile choice. And as we all grow, it counts. One of our daughter, grandchildren here, her mother is here. Miss Well. 
sorry, sorry, you know, never, never, when you watch out for her, you know, when you're scholarship or any doctorate for US, Man. she grew up in this church. Was, uh, Sunday school. Oh, you never back. Well, watch on them. Sunday school, you never back. A chap with her, and then on you, a better. Throughout her school career, she's been among the top, top, top. She got a full scholarship. See them, Bishwa. See them. I remember our testimony. I'm bringing my offering. So, uh, my train. I didn't even make your own. Your own. The man was seen. Oh, the man got seen. Oh, America. In church, I had the man was saying, "Papa, I know I'm not my guy in America." Now, got seen. Oh, the man was saying, "Oh, the man was saying, oh." No, no, so strong. What's my sir? Me, yeah, yeah, no, so strong. Then the point you receive us for US. Now, yeah, yeah, prayer meeting. You wanna? I said, now, yeah, yeah, healing service. Now, my bomb, pray, be a mobile, be a little ready. I take it from my husband. That night, doctors had surrounded the husband's bed in the US. The same time I hear bomb, pray, or hand. Nanya me, or all your pressure on you, no. Ah, doc, doctors want to see they all recover. Want to see they all recover. Because the air bomb pile, all you want to work America. Go. Amen. America. Amen. America. It counts. Amen. It counts. Amen. Stand up on your feet, everybody. It counts. No matter the difficulty, it still counts. There will be difficulties. There will be delays sometimes. But it's worthwhile the investment. We need to give him all the glory. All the praise. Saying you deserve it. You deserve it for us. I, I believe that some of us need to rededicate our lives to the Lord this morning. Some of us have been too cold. Too cold, too casual. Lift up your hands and rededicate your life to the Lord today. Say, Lord. I, I, I rededicate my life to you. I'm going to serve you. I'm going to walk with you. I'm going to follow you. Lift up your hands, everybody, as we rededicate our lives to the Lord. I wish you'd be quick with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You deserve it. Lift up your hands, everybody. You deserve it. Make that dedication to the Lord right now. You deserve it. You deserve it. My hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. Yes, Jesus, we thank you. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. You want to rededicate your life to the Lord. Rededicate your life to the Lord. It counts. My hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. He belongs. He belongs to you. He belongs to you. Let your voice say, You deserve. Come on, he deserves the glory. All the honor is a yours. Is a loss. We've made a what my choice. We've made the right choice. We've made the right choice. He deserves all the glory, all the honor. All the glory belongs to you, Lord. We are grateful, Lord. Lord, we are grateful. Lord, we exalt you. We magnify your name, Lord.
Kibari kala ba koto bra ba da koshita bra ba da kaba da kaza kara. Kibari kala ba koto koto bra ba da koto bra ba da koshita bra ba da kaza kara. You deserve it. 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 Sing hallelujah. 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 All the glory. All the glory. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory to God. See, some of us, we had to run to follow Christ. We didn't have any option. We were dying. And we are ever grateful. Ever grateful. Ever grateful. Got born again at the age of 15 when I almost lost my mind. Walk with this God for the past 44 years. Mm. It's worth all the choice. Yes. This choice you have made will not be in vain. Amen. There's not going to come an occasion where you will wonder, was it worth it? Mm. Because for every crisis, for every situation, I'm praying for you, the Lord will show up Amen. to reassure you. Assure you of who he is, Amen. what he has done, and what he will do for you. You see, the psalmist says something says that when my heart is overwhelmed, that's when I run to the rock that is higher than I. He says, You are my refuge. So, Lord, I am safe. I don't know about you, but sometimes our head gets overwhelmed. If you look at Psalm 66. Psalm 66, if you look at verse 1, uh, I like it so much. I like it so much. Is it the same scripture? Quickly. Oh, uh, is it Psalm 66? Psalm 61, I'm not sure. Psalm 61. Psalm 61. It says, Hear my cry, O God. <laughs> I turn on to my prayer. Go, on, let's go on. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For that has been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert of thy wings. I like verse 5. For thou, O God, has heard my vows. Thou hast given me the heritage of those that fear thy name. That will prolong the king's life. His years as many generations. Listen. Everybody comes to that point in life. <laughs> when you don't know what to do, your heart is overwhelmed. That's where you can run and hide. In the tabernacle where his wings are. Say, Lord, you are my refuge. See, the assurance of God's presence, the assurance of God's help, this is what I'm praying for you this morning. Amen. That when your heart is overwhelmed, He will continue to assure you Amen. of His help, 
of his presence of his power I used to sing this song when I was a young Christian. Hear my cry, O oh Lord. I turn unto my prayer from the ends of the earth. Will I cry unto thee when my heart is overwhelmed? Please lead me to the rock. That is higher than I. I don't know about you, but I've been there before. I've been there. I've seen it all. I've, st I've stood in my bedroom with mommy, three arm robbers with cows pointing at us. Please scroll it to verse one and let's sing it together. From the ends of the year. Will I cry unto thee? Oh, yes. When my heart is over, it happens sometimes. It happens. Please lead me to the rock. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It happens sometimes. I don't know. It happens regularly. When my heart is overwhelmed, please lead me to the rock. You stand on that rock, and all your enemies are below your feet. Oh. refuge you are our hiding place job and dc you are our strong tower there's no one who can help us but you lord help us lord help us bring us out of darkness into your light bring us out of the pit into your rock help us lord from the ends to the earth i cry Lift up your hands and church, let's call upon the Lord. And when my heart is overwhelmed, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. lead me to the rock. Oh, that, that is higher than I. Oh, ah. that is higher than I. Oh, that is higher than I. Oh, higher than I. Higher than I. Higher than I. Thank you, Father. We bless you, Lord. God is higher than I. God is higher than I. God is higher than I. God is Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We glorify your holy name. Let's go ahead and celebrate. The Lord is good. We have made the right choice. You have made the right choice. Don't let any friend think that you made a wrong choice. Yeah. You have made the right choice to choose Jesus to be in the house of the Lord and to commit yourself yeah. to the things of God. It's the best choice any man or woman can make. We have made the right choice. We have made the right choice. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Prepare your project offering. Hallelujah. It's enough. Anyway, so on, on to that. Uh, and you might yet to enter it. Mm, I'm told that. I'm told that. Anyway. Enter it. Hallelujah. We thank you so much. If you brought your tithes, walk forward. Let's receive your tithes. If you brought your tithes, quickly. Let's receive your tithes.